brought her loss to life. Please pray for her family, that they may, gain com may, may find comfort in her loss. Rachel Davino, or Davino, she's one of the staff members. You promise that you're going to pray for her and reach out to her family? Allison Wyatt, who also passed away, please promise to pray for her family. Another one of the teachers will be is Anne Marie Murphy, who would like to pray for her family. And we have one more. <laughs> Beautiful girl who passed away during the shooting by the name of Catherine Hubbard, who would like to pray for Catherine's family. Sweet. And now we're going to pray. And this prayer will be an individual prayer. I would like to ask you to request from the Holy Spirit that He will make you a Christian, a young adult, full with compassion. Amen? Amen. So we're not going to have a prayer from here. Take time right now, as we hear some soft music, to pray on your own and ask God to make you a young adult full of compassion. Amen. prayer as Father God is just as Pastor Cortez said Father God that you would make us compassionate young people and Father a generation that chases after your heart Father a generation passionate about service about loving one another Father that we would throw agenda out the window and Lord that we would just be worried about one another genuinely Father that we would just want to learn each other's story Father that we would just want to learn what's going on in each other's lives so Lord, we thank you and we praise you. These things we do ask and we do pray. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. <coughs> the next song we're going to do is uh, Let My Words Be Few. So I'll 
again. You are God in heaven. Let's see that again. Oh, you are God in heaven. And here am I on earth. So I'll let my words be few. Oh, Jesus, I am so.
very special moment. Thank you for the young adults who are here at Camp Winnicott right now. And thank you for all of those young adults who are watching us right now through the stream in front of a computer somewhere. I know we have a few in Bermuda, throughout the Atlantic Union, throughout the world. I want you to bless those young adults and anyone who is watching as well. And now as we come into this very special moment, Holy Spirit, continue to be with us. And thank you for the gift of Jesus, God. And thank you because we can be in love with him and love him because he loved us first. Thank you so much for your presence. Amen. Tonight, one of the segments that we have in this special service, we always want to approach the ordinance of communion with less weight. Too often we keep on keep holding on to the things that we need to let go of. We hold on to stuff, it weighs us down, it makes us get old. Some of us look old because we're carrying around too much weight. And I'm not just talking about fat. <laughs> I'm not talking about the clothes we wear. We carry around stuff for nothing. Sometimes people have moved on and we still hold in a grudge. And we approach God the very same way. We believe that God wants to carry the same grudges we carry. But I came tonight to let you know that God doesn't care about your mess. Matter of fact, he said that if you connect with him and you give it over to him, he's going to take care of it. Number of ways. Uh, he talks about it as if he will sweep it into the depths of the sea. He said he will turn his back on your mess. Matter of fact, could you believe God will forget? How could God forget? He knows it before it happens. And he knows it after it happens. And while it's happening, he knows it's happened. But yet still God is wanting you to know that even in the middle of your mess, he will forget about it. He even shared with us a text. First Ephesians 1, 7. And I want to read it from the message. I think it really speaks to the situation here. It says, because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, because of what Jesus did for you and for me, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We are free people. In other words, we are lighter people. We are less weighted down people. Free from penalties. Free from punishments. Free from our misdeeds. And not just barely free, but free abundantly. And so tonight, as it's every time that you have an opportunity to sit at the table of communion, every time you have an opportunity to remind yourself of what God did for us by shedding his blood, we have an opportunity to become lighter. To get that theological theme or theological term that we like to throw around called forgiveness. But forgiveness does do well for us. It gives us a sense of clarity. It allows us to see the realness of the world. It allows us to express our compassion. It allows us to live the way Jesus wanted us to live. Tonight you have some rocks on your table. These rocks represent things that weigh you down. Think about it. 
Could you imagine the one rock you have? Pick one rock up. Let's pick up a rock. Or give me the biggest one. The rock symbolizes the weight that you're carrying, the guilt. The rock symbolizes the, the stuff we want to keep going on with. Could you imagine if you had 10 of these rocks in your pocket? Some of us may have more, some may have less, but we are carrying around stuff we don't need. And tonight God is giving us an opportunity to take this stuff and let it go because of his sacrifice that he made on the altar of the cross. We don't need to carry this stuff around. And so, symbolically, between you and your God, don't have to know what your mess is. No one at the table have to have to. You know, it's not anything you got to agonize over. You know you don't need it. Let's not pretend. If you and God were the only two in this room, you would be so naked, you wouldn't even know what to do. Tonight, pretend it's you and God. Let this rock symbolize the things you need to let go and ask for forgiveness for. I invite you to Bow your head and pray. And ask God for that forgiveness. And then, as he says in his word, he's going to bury it into the depths of the sea. The buckets that are there on your table symbolizes the sea. And I invite you at the appropriate time, when the Spirit gives you the signal, to let your back drop into the sea and when you have done that you would be forgiven because of what God did on the cross we are free people let us pray Since I lay my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. Loving Father, all across this room tonight, weights have been dropped. Your young people have been freed. 
Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that we can still come to you and ask for forgiveness and be bold about it because you promised because of your son's death on the cross we are free people. So Father, we want to live abundantly free tonight and we have let go of our stuff, our mess, the, the drama in our lives. Tonight, Father, turn that page. Renew in us that right spirit and enter into our hearts is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> I want to join my voice with um, with Roger, but I want to focus on another aspect. We've talked about how we've been hurt, um, because it's easy for us to think about it, isn't it? It's us to think about the broken relationships around us. It's easy to think about maybe even our own broken relationship with God at times, or the broken planet, or the or whatever we've got even holding against ourselves, maybe mistakes that we've made, but. What, what hurt has have other people projected onto you? Has that happened to you? Is it easy to remember? Are you, easy, are you easily able to recall it? Is it? I want you to, to do something. I want you to, to find a little piece of paper on your table. Maybe you've got a piece of paper. Oh, the brown paper right here on your table. Find a little piece of brown paper. And there should be some crayons around there as well. Grab a piece of paper, grab a crayon. <clears throat> this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. With the crayon in your hand, right onto the paper, I want you to make some sort of symbol that represents all that hurt. You can draw your heart, you can draw who has hurt you. You can draw whatever you would like onto that paper, but draw something. Draw something that symbolizes that hurt. Now I want you to take that paper in your hands and I want you to look at it. I want you to look at what you've put onto the paper. This, this is not a Picasso. This is more of some of that abstract art, and it's okay because it means something to you. It means something to you. Do you want to let go of the pain? Or do you want to continue to savor the pain so that you can keep a grudge? Do you know we do that, right? But if you want to let it go, I want to remind you of what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you let go of the hurtful things people do to you, if you let go, God will also forgive and let go of the hurtful things that you have done. I don't know why. It's very easy for me to remember your mistakes. But it's a lot harder for me to remember my mistakes. If you're willing to let go, if you want to let go, if you're ready to let go, then I want you to throw your paper with the rock into the dry bucket. Ball it up. Ball it up. Ball it up tight in your hands. Tight in your hands. Ball it up. Squeeze it. And then let it go. 
Let it go. Let it go. I, let me give you. Let me give you three reasons why you should let it go. The first reason why you should let it go. Listen up. Listen up. The first reason you should let it go is because you are loved. You are loved by God. And that love fulfills a lot of things. The second reason is you are free. You are free. You are free. And the third reason is you are forgiven. You are forgiven, Jesus Christ. you have a candle on your table. created light. He said, let it be light. That was the first thing that God created. The Bible said that he's the light. If we go to the tabernacle, as you see on the screen, from far and far, you will experience the light. At the entrance of the sanctuary, you will see the light. The lamp there was sacrificed. You will see light, fire. You go to the holy place, you also see light, candlestick. And if you go to the most holy place, you see the Shekinah, you see the light. So from the beginning, Genesis, the sanctuary, you see light. And we're supposed to be a light. So if we're going to be showing compassion, not only this year, but the rest of our life. I think we should try our best to light someone that is in the dark. Amen. So do you want to light someone Amen. by showing compassion? I'm going to ask you to get your light and light it up. Light it up. Light it. Raise it now because we want to take a nice picture. Bring it up. And repeat after me. I'm going to show compassion. This represents a person. And I'm going to pray for that person. So now, just think about someone. Think about someone. In school, at home, or close to you, in the church, that needs to be lighted. And pray for that person right now. Let's pray. Just yourself. Just think about the person and say, God, this person needs to be lighted. So help me to show compassion. This is holy space. God is here and you are welcome. This is your space to be with God and God's space to be with you. Make yourself at home. Be yourself. 
Be real. There is no rush. Let God love you. Let God know you. Let God heal you. Let God speak to you. Receive from God. Commune with God. And let's together enjoy the blessing of his presence. He now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served. He got up, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water into a basin, knelt down, and began to wash their feet. Research has shown that the feet was probably one of the dirtiest parts of the body back then. But Jesus Christ knelt down and washed his disciples' feet. Foot washing symbolizes our commitment to love others as Jesus loves us. So right now, we will take part in the foot washing. I would like for you to pick a partner and prepare to wash their feet around the table. After you're done washing your fellow followers' feet, take a moment and pray for that person. Pray sincerely for that person praying that they will be on a new path to show compassion to everyone that they meet. The basins are right underneath your table. They have water on it. As soon as you, as soon as you finish uh, washing the feet of your fellow follower, there will be people that will come in and refill your buckets to make sure that you can wash the feet of that person who wash your feet. We have some of our young adults who are helping us throughout this weekend that will also be distributing the paper towels in order to dry our feet. Thank you. And as we wash each other's feet, we're going to sing together as well. Do not let anyone Go away without participating in this wonderful ceremony that Jesus instituted. Jesus did wash the feet of Peter, and he knew that Peter was about to deny him. And he did wash the feet of Judas. So this special ceremony, this special moment, is not for the perfect, it is for the sinners. So let's participate right now together.
Sing a couple of things while you guys continue to wash, uh, wash each other's feet. The first song we'll do is uh, "Old Rugged Cross."
Table. 